Jordan Peterson is exceedingly and extraordinarily intelligent. And by most estimations, he is a consummate gentleman and a great educator, a man spirited with a driving force to help improve the human condition. But in his recent April 2018 discussion with Matt Dillahunty, he uses Dostoevsky's Crime and Punishment and the character, um, I haven't read it, so I have to read what I wrote, Raskolnikov, as the focal point for his reasoning. And he also uses the story wherein Raskolnikov battles with himself before a murder which would enable him to save his sister from, as Jordan Peterson says, an unusual or sophisticated form of prostitution, and so that he would enable himself to acquire the means to become a great lawyer and save many people. And he steals himself to do this by criticizing himself in an atheistic way and saying, or what is being purported to be an atheistic way, certainly not a secular humanistic way, as Matt Dillahunty would say, and I would say, and others might say, he criticizes himself, Raskolnikov does, in saying, perhaps you're a moral coward. There is no extant reason. I'm going to put words into the mouth of the story here because I haven't read Dostoevsky. There's no divine reason. There's no, there's no moral challenge to my splitting this woman's skull with an axe and releasing this world of good that I can do. What Jordan Peterson fails to understand here, or which he's overlooked, I should say, is that even the moral reasoning that comes in the form of religion, even if you accept that there is a deity or a higher power, even if you accept that there's a God, whether it be the Christian God or the Muslim God or the Jewish God, or it's one God among them all, you have to ask yourself, what is the moral imperative behind the God's reasoning that thou shalt not kill? And it isn't sufficient to say just because. Because there is the idea among people like Jordan Peterson that it isn't so important whether this God really exists. It is the significance and the efficacy of the religion to instill in people a moral imperative. So what do you do with the people who are not satisfied with the just because? With those that would be willing to acknowledge the worth of religion, despite all of its flaws and dangers, for its moral worth, they need to be satisfied of the fact, or the idea rather, that there is reasoning behind the moral imperative set down by God. And where does this moral imperative come from? If it comes from God, it must be reasonable to men, or they won't execute it or see it as reasonable. And this validates the argument of Sam Harris and Matt Dillahunty, and probably Dan Dennett, and Richard Dawkins, of the rest, of people such as myself, who would say that it is based on the idea of well-being. Raskolnikov shouldn't split the woman's head open, even if there is no God, even if he thinks it will unleash a world of good that dwarfs the crime of killing the woman, because it's wrong to create such unwell-being and suffering or lack of life in another, and this can only come from the moral reasoning that we cannot create that life again. Not just that we cannot create it, because we will be creating life, artificial life, but that we couldn't restore that particular person's consciousness, which is the ultimate loss of well-being. And this is an imperative that is reached by our own existential reality and our own appreciation of consciousness, existence, and life. And that's what validates the idea of a God, invented or not. So the reasoning is flawed that we need a God as a moral imperative. Yes, it works in the case of simple-minded people 
to some degree, notwithstanding the neurosis and violence that it causes. But it doesn't work with those who Jordan Peterson is, I think, in the body of his work, suggesting should not want the doing away with of religion for its moral imperative value. Its moral imperative value is rested in reason.